Good afternoon. My name is David Mercier, and today I'm going to be presenting Optimizing Petroleum Production Sharing Contracts. Production sharing contracts, just the main objectives, they need to be equitable. Uh, definitely, things need to be fair, efficient, easily to administer, and easily checked, flexible. It uh, works with, with a high or low price environment. And also, there is a great opportunity to incentivize uh, for field development and or like greenhouse gas reductions. You can make the you know, royalty or profit or production sharing actually go down once greenhouse gas targets are, are, um, are met. So it's really a great opportunity to, to be really creative. Governments can reduce the production share with environmental investments. Um, some of the questions that, that need to be asked, does it encourage cooperation, uh, working towards a common goal? Does it risk uh, the field abandonment at a low or higher oil price, or really a low oil price? So is it robust? So when the price of oil is low, uh, does it work for, for the government or uh, you know, the, the operator or the mineral owner? Production sharing contract negotiations involves cooperation and competition. The cooperation is brainstorming ideas that maximize the value, really incentivizing, looking at value added activities like field investment and for governments, as mentioned, you know, could be uh, greenhouse gas el elimination or reduction. So really this is this opportunity during the negotiation and certainly competition agreeing on a revenue split uh, at the end. Some of the worldwide profit sharing splits where the contractor take varies from 9% to 60%. Cost recovery where profit uh, sharing starts varies from zero to 100%. And then maximum government participation varies from 0% to 51% in various countries. The country risk and uncertainty, certainly a big thing. So the more risk and uncertainty in a country, uh, which is really important to determine the various components, uh, the political risk, the risk of losing the lease, the geologic risk, the proven probable and possible, uh, cost risk could be country inflation, uh, the price risk. Now, prices typically, oil prices traded globally but natural gas is more local and, and dependent on local uh, network infrastructure. The financial history is, is certainly filled with fat-tailed events or unusual extreme price swings that based on historical prices seem implausible. Unlike dice, markets can be subject to not just risk, an arithmetic concept, but also uncertainty. It doesn't conform to any kind of numerical constraint. I mean, simply uh, events are not only, some events are not only unpredictable, but they are unthinkable. So those are, are things that certainly need to be considered. Um, it, the risk that can be quantified in, in negotiating these, these contracts. And certainly the higher the risk, you know, the, in a country, uh, the less, um, the country can take from the com from the company to encourage investment. This is just the, the oil and gas uh, spectrum of risk. Uh, essentially, here you can see you have bank loans, which uh, you know target six to eight percent, with PDP, just PDP reserves, and then as you know PDNP, PUD, as the risk in increase, uh, proven, possible, and then exploration wildcatting. The rate, the commensurate internal rate of return has to increase in order to encourage investment. Here you can see the revenue sharing diagram. You start off here with the uh, cost, the operating cost, you know, the royalty and net profit share, government take, and then the government share taxes, and then what's left over is the profit. So you have the revenue and then all the components of what has to be paid before the, the contractor could actually take uh, the profit. Some of the most common types of production sharing contracts, fixed rate royalty, typically a sixth, where it's just one sixth of the gross revenue. There's an oil price-based uh, royalty with a sliding scale 
attracts the oil price. Net profits, which is a payout, is a, a percent of uh, the profits. So to incentivize investments, all three of these can encourage cost recovery methods uh, based on reduced royalty and or net profits. An example would be, um, you know, if the contractor was to invest a certain amount of money, you know, on drilling development over the course of five years, in return, the royalty rate or the revenue is reduced, reduced or eliminated until payback, an internal rate of return or another metric. So this really increases the incentive for development to increase the total value of the project. And then after that, you know, it could be decided what kind of, uh, how to split that value. But the first objective is to really increase the value as much as possible. What is a royalty? A royalty is a contractual percent of production, um, typical from 12 and a half to 25%. It's just a percent of the total revenue. It's just an example there. Uh, online profit sharing's royalty revenue is not subject to continuous cost risk. It's only the percent it's severed from any capital, capex, opex, abandonment liabilities. So it's much lower risk um, to own a royalty than a, than a working interest. Some of the te technical rigors that you know really need to you know when designing a profit sharing um, framework. Um, you know, first, you know, stress test the historical data, you know, evaluating the operating costs. Is it profitable at, you know, different oil prices? So really make it robust, calculating the, the break even at various oil prices and evaluating the historical elasticity of production at low oil price. Does it, you know, does it look like it would be something that would put the operator out of business when the price is low in the future? Many scenarios can be run. Um, you could calculate financial metrics for, for government and contractors given the project risk. Yeah, you know, again, you know, the question is in, in the end, is it equitable? Does it work for, for all parties? Just a simple example. Um, you have an oil price at $50 a barrel, operating cost at 20, so operating income at 30. The government takes 12%, you know, royalty and taxes. So the net after tax income is 18%. So in this simple case, the government take is 40% and the contractor take is 60%. Just kind of looking at that case with a tornado diagram to see what is the most important in, in terms of input, uh, certainly oil price. And so, you really need a profit sharing arrangement that uh, works with oil price. So it's, it's got to be low when the oil price is low and, and higher when the oil price is higher to be progressive. A sliding scale royalty is one that tracks, you know, the, the, can track oil price and, and, and can really significantly reduce an administrative cost over a net profits. So there are some advantages, certainly, of the, the sliding scale oil price based royalty. Just a simple design uh, for that. You know, you've got oil price in this case at $40, operating cost at, at $20. Um, you can include other costs, certainly, in this, but just calculating a break even royalty rate. So that's kind of the first step to designing uh, an oil price based sliding scale royalty. And then you know, after you, you calculate the break even at various oil prices, so various, then, you know, that you would take a per percent. In this case, it's 30% of that break even. So, I mean, this is something that kind of a starting point where you could go back historically and see if this, if this works. Um, if it, is it robust? Is it equitable? Does it, you know, all of those questions that were asked, you know, is it, does it fulfill those, those requirements? Fixed rate royalty, you know, some of the benefits, you've got no cost risk, it's easy to administer, but some of the risks include, you know, when the price is low, the, the royalty will re receive, you know, royalty revenue while the, 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 the really owner uh, could lose money. Um, so it doesn't really work in a low, a really low oil price environment. 
So this situation could cause premature abandonment of the field and really a, you know, not a good situation. So the fixed rate royalty uh, is, is, is not really that robust when, when the price is really low. The sliding scale, some of the price, some of the benefits, you know, certainly no cost risk, easy to administer, it's progressive, it's lower with oil prices and vice versa. Some of the risk certainly is with a bad design. You know, if it's not designed properly, then, then certainly there could be a problem. Net profits, some of the benefits certainly paid on profit, so it's progressive. Some of the risk, the administrative costs could be extremely high, and it's really can be subject to disagreements and lawsuits and audits, and um, could be, you know, uh, a problem, you know, with the royalty owner, uh, with, with the, the various net profit owners. Um, could be a lot of disputes over what's chargeable, what isn't chargeable, and so those are issues. Incentives to increase production can really add value. Um, really, I mean, when negotiating these, it's really an opportunity to incentivize the operator to increase the size of the pie. You know, some of the ways you could have profit sharing until, um, you know, with a certain level of investment, and, you know, until and it was various metrics like uh, payout, payback, internal rate of return, return on investment, or environmental targets are hit. You know, something that really increases the size of the pie, everyone gets a bigger piece, and then, you know, the competition kind of comes in as what kind of slice, you know, each party would take. But the number one goal should be to creatively increase as much value in the, in the project as possible. So the one thing that's important to understand is the royalty production elasticity. It's important to understand when oil prices are relatively low, the effect that the royalty has on production rate. If the oil and gas production elasticity to, to a high oil, to royalty is high, then oil production could significantly drop at low oil prices, creating really a, a lose-lose type situation. So a higher royalty is equivalent to a higher operating cost. So with a really low um, oil price, a higher operating cost could certainly put the operator out of business. So those things need to be looked at and made sure that you've got the right design. You know, just put it in a game theory framework, you know, you've got a high oil price, high, high royalty rate, you know, certainly it's fine. Uh, but if you have a low oil price um, and a high, and a high uh, royalty rate, then, then it doesn't work. So the, the optimum situation, um, the equilibrium, you know, is, is, you know, when the, when the royalty rate, when the oil price is high, the royalty rate is higher. And when the oil price is low, the royalty rate is lower. So that, that fits in more of a robust manner. Kind of looking at royalty rate, you know, in terms of risk and comparing it to uh, the royalty interest to other, like a, the working interest, certainly it's, it's much lower because it doesn't take into consideration the cost. This is just kind of, you know, one framework for looking at, um, you know, the economics and, and how, you know, different project economics. On the y-axis, you have the discounted payout at $55, and then on the, on the x-axis, you have payout. And then each one of these bubbles from one to eight is a different project. So you could kind of screen using this tool, using this graph, the screen projects, and kind of say, you know, under under this profit sharing framework, you know, do these do these projects are they economically viable, or does you know the profit sharing framework actually make them make less projects economically value profitable, and therefore you kind of shrink the total value. So those are things to, to really take into consideration. In summary, production sharing contracts are a great opportunity to incentivize contractors to invest in value added activities. These activities can include development and government improving the environment. For governments trying to meet environmental regulations objectives, this could be a great tool. Uh, many governments have tried to get the highest possible amount, thinking that you know higher translates to more. This, this approach really has as resulted in profit sharing that needs to be renegotiated when the oil price goes really low uh, and can cause premature 
abandon it. Um, should never be a high, you know, it should always be to maximize the revenue. In any profit sharing agreement, uh, the economic interdependence is extremely large. These negotiations should not be treated as a zero sum game like chess, where someone wins and someone loses. When the, when the rate is high, the oil price, um, a low oil price, you know, could, could cause a, a, a problem in a, in, a, in a low oil price environment. The only way the royalty owner can win long term is to make sure the royalty rate is low when the price is low. And that goes for, for net profits or any kind of profit sharing. You know, when the price of oil is low, which is the biggest component um, to profit, um, the profit sharing has to, has to be low. To better understand how, how the ro royalty or net profits affect the operation, it's important to note that, you know, a change in the, in the net profits or the royalty has the same effect as, as the op increase in the, the operating cost. So it, it could definitely cause, if too high, it can cause premature abandonment. Net profit sharing contracts are progressive systems employed in many places around the world. The only issue is um, certainly there can be many disagreements over what is, a ch what is a cost and what should be included, what shouldn't be included. You could have disputes that could end up in, in litigation. And just the accounting and administrative cost could be very high for these net profits uh, contracts. It's in everyone's interest um, to invest the resources to achieve an equitable, robust agreement with the best incentives. Once it's in place, once everything is codified and agreements and stuff, changing it's not easy. I just want to thank everybody and I welcome any questions. Thank you.